Sylvie Kiniji, born 1953, was Prime Minister of Burundi from July 10, 1993 to February 7, 1994, and Acting President from October 27, 1993 to February 5, 1994, the first and to date only woman to hold these positions. Kiniji was born in 1953 in a Tutsi family in the countryside of Burundi. Her father was a merchant and her mother cultivated the soil and kept the house. Sylvie was the third of six children. The oldest was a girl and had to help her mother, but Sylvie was allowed to go to a Belgian school for girls run by nuns. She received both primary and secondary education and afterwards went to the capital, Bujumbura, to study economics. At 19 years old she married one of the professors and had four children, but continued her studies. She was also engaged in the women's organization of the governing Tutsi party and managed to get laws changed and economic and social measures implemented for women. She headed the group in the capital and was a member of the National Executive Board of the Women's Branch. After Kiniji graduated from Burundi University, she got a job in Burundi's central bank and at the same time taught at the university. In the bank she was promoted and was given responsibility for research and studies. In 1991 she became advisor to the Prime Minister and was responsible for reducing military expenditures and carrying out an economic reform program. There was armed conflict between Hutus and Tutsis until 1993. Then elections were organized as a transition to democracy. To great surprise the leader of the opposition Melchior Ndade was elected president of Burundi. He appointed a cabinet with two-thirds Hutu and one-third Tutsi members. Sylvie Kiniji became prime minister. This was part of an effort to build unity between Burundi's two ethnic groups and Dade was Hutu, and wished to decrease Tutsi hostility to his administration by appointing a Tutsi as prime minister. Kiniji stated that reconciliation would be her highest priority. On October 21, however, President Ndade and six of his ministers were killed by Tutsi insurgents. This marked the beginning of the Burundi civil war, with widespread ethnic violence breaking out. Kiniji and other senior government figures took refuge in the French embassy, and survived the chaos. After a few days, Kiniji managed to gather together 15 of the 22 ministers to continue to govern, effectively being the acting president. Her position was bolstered when Pierre Bouyoya and Jean-Baptiste Bagaza, former military presidents, gave their support to her government. In January 1994, Parliament elected Cyprien Antaraemira, the former agriculture minister, as president for the remainder of Ndade's term. As Antaraemira was a Hutu, the appointment generated hostility from many Tutsis. Kiniji, however, recognized Antaraemira as president, but resigned as prime minister when he was inaugurated. She was the object of criticism, attacks, and threats from all sides and it was not long before she left the country. In February she was replaced by Anatole Konyankiko, another Tutsi. Sylvie Kiniji, née Antigashira, born November 24, 1953, is a Burundian politician and economist who served as Prime Minister of Burundi from July 10, 1993 to February 7, 1994, and Acting President from November 1993 to February 5, 1994, making her the second African woman to serve as a president. Born to a Tutsi family, she earned a degree in banking from the University of Burundi in 1979 and another diploma from the Centre de Formation de la Profession Bancaire in Paris. Politically, Kiniji was closely affiliated with the Union pour le Progrès National, UPRNA, Burundi's only legal political party at the time, and was an active member of the Union de Femmes Burundaises, a subgroup of UPRNA, serving as a member of its central committee by 1987. In that capacity she lobbied for legislative changes and government measures to benefit women. In 1990 Kiniji was hired by the Bank of the Republic of Burundi to direct its Department of Research and Statistics, and the following year she was placed in charge of Burundi's Structural Adjustment Program. In the summer of 1993 Burundi hosted free elections, which were won by Upernas rival, Front pour la Démocratie au Burundi, Frodebu. 
the new FRODBA president of Burundi, Melchior Ndade, appointed Kiniji prime minister of Burundi on July 10. Kiniji wished to pursue economic development while she was prime minister, but thought that this could not be achieved until ethnic tensions between Tutsis and Hutus were reduced. Thus, she declared that ethnic reconciliation would be her top priority. On October 21 President Ndade and several other officials were killed by Tutsi soldiers in a coup attempt, leaving her the highest-ranking official alive and the de facto head of state of Burundi. She joined her surviving ministers in the French embassy until she could return to her residence under French military guard as the coup failed. Though her government proved unable to contain the ethnic violence following the coup, she played a key role in brokering a political compromise that allowed for the election of Cyprien Antari Amira as the next president. She resigned when he took office in 1994 and assumed an executive position at the Banque Commerciale du Burundi. She then held several international positions before returning to Burundi in 2008 and becoming an independent economic consultant. Sylvie Antigashiro was born on November 24, 1953 in Mujoyai. Rwanda Urundi, today in Bujumbura rural province. Ethnically, she is Tutsi. Her father was a merchant, while her mother farmed and maintained their home. The third of six children, Antigashira was allowed to attend school while the oldest daughter in the family helped their mother. She was given a primary and secondary education by nuns in the Uyenda parish. She then studied at the University of Burundi under the Faculty of Economic Sciences, graduating in 1979 with a degree in banking and credit. In 1990 she earned a Diplôme d'études supérieures from the Centre de Formation de la Profession Bancaire in Paris. In 1973, Antigashira married a Burundian academic, Fermin Kiniji, who had taught her in school, and had four or five children with him. He was ethnically Hutu. Her husband supported her desire to further her education and career and the family hired a maid to take care of their house and children. He died in either 1992 or 1993. Urundi became independent from Belgium as Burundi in July 1962. The country quickly fell under the political domination of Tutsis at the expense of the Hutu majority ethnic group. Kiniji believed that democracy was introduced too rapidly in Burundi without proper preparation, leading to political organizing along ethnic lines and the heightening of ethnic tensions. Burundi's government became controlled by Tutsi military officers, who ruled for approximately 30 years. Politically, Kiniji was closely affiliated with the Union pour le Progrès National, Uprna, Burundi's only legal political party, and was an active member of the Union de Femmes Burundaises, a subgroup of Uprna, serving as a member of its Central Committee by 1987. In that capacity she lobbied for legislative changes and government measures to benefit women. In 1990 Kiniji was hired by the Bank of the Republic of Burundi to direct its Department of Research and Statistics, while also teaching courses at the University of Burundi. In 1991 she left the job when President Pierre Buyoya appointed her special consultant in the office of the Prime Minister, making her responsible for the implementation of Burundi's structural adjustment program. In that capacity she conducted negotiations with the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and foreign donors. Impressed with her work, Buyoya subsequently appointed her permanent secretary in the Ministry of Economic Planning. In the summer of 1993 Burundi underwent a democratic transition. The country hosted free elections, which were won by Uprna's rival, Front pour la Démocratie au Burundi, Frodebu. The new president of Burundi, Melchior Ndade the leader of Frodebu and the first Hutu to become head of state, offered Kiniji the position of prime minister of Burundi in his new government to succeed Adrian Sibamana. Aichi reportedly considered the offer for some time, but eventually decided to accept it, reasoning that she was not more politically inexperienced than the army officers which had previously ruled the country. Furthermore, she was personally acquainted with Ndade, having studied alongside him at Parisian institutions and even sat on a committee that judged his academic performance. She was also an acquaintance of Leonard Niangoma and Cyprien Antari Amira, 
two Frodo politicians who Ndade wanted to become ministers in the new government. Speaking of her selection, Kiniji stated that it was a good surprise for Burundian women primarily, but for African women too. Frodo hardliners were angered by Kiniji's appointment, seeing her assumption of the premiership to be a betrayal by Ndade. Radical Uprana members were also displeased with her selection, since the party did not formally nominate her as a candidate, and they felt that Ndade had chosen her purely because she was a Tutsi woman and did not expect to rely on her abilities in office. The government ultimately comprised two-thirds Hutu and one-third Tutsi members. Kiniji was one of two women ministers. The government was sworn in on July 10. Kiniji wished to pursue economic development while she was prime minister, but thought that this could not be achieved until ethnic tensions were reduced. Thus, she declared that ethnic reconciliation would be her highest priority. In mid-October she dispatched her ministers across the country on a mission to promote calm and understanding, she went to the northeast to denounce the barbarism of political violence associated with the previous elections. On October 21 President Ndade and several other officials were killed by Tutsi soldiers in a coup attempt. A puppet civilian figure, Francois Ngeze, was presented by military authorities as the new head of state. Kiniji's bodyguards remained loyal to her during the takeover. She and other senior government figures took refuge in the French embassy. She was the highest ranking civilian official to survive the coup attempt. From the embassy she continued to issue directives on government policy. Buyoya and his predecessor, Jean-Baptiste Bagaza, both gave their support to her government and the coup failed due to an outbreak of violence and international condemnation. On November 7 she left the embassy and returned to her residence under French military guard. The death of Ndade and others in the presidential line of succession left her de facto head of state of Burundi. Tutsi extremists continued to employ violence in the aftermath of the coup, intimidating Kiniji's government and hampering its ability to provide leadership to the country. Kiniji's government comprising 15 of the original 22 ministers stabilized the situation in Bujumbura, the capital, but proved unable to contain the ethnic violence across the country following the coup, in which thousands died. The radical Tutsi Uprana faction became disgruntled with her actions before and especially during the crisis. With regards to her failure to attend a commemoration for the anniversary of the death of erstwhile Uprana leader Louis Ruagasor on October 13, the newspaper Panafrica wrote, for a prime minister who said she was from Uprana, missing this ceremony was for some proof that Sylvie Kiniji was not from Uprana. Some do not hesitate to say that if it hadn't been for this October 21st coup, she would now be at Frodebu. The newspaper El Observateur argued not having been mandated by Uprana, knowing simply that she is Prime Minister thanks to God and to Ndade and to Frodebu, the First Lady Sik will behave during the crisis of October 1993 as one would expect. She will be totally absent and when she tries to come forward, it is to tirelessly repeat the theses of Frodebu. On November 15 she wrote a letter to the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity, appealing for a military intervention to restore order in the country. The army and opposition politicians denounced this as a proposal for a recolonization of Burundi. In December her government appointed a commission of inquiry led by the Procurator General to investigate human rights abuses that had occurred after the coup, but its work never began due to objections from the parliamentary opposition. I wanted peace and normal conditions but my collaborators wanted me to declare a coup d'etat. You can't carry on like that. When I managed to get a successor elected in a reasonably acceptable manner, I resigned. Kiniji speaking on her role after the coup, 1999. Kiniji, burdened by the leadership responsibility placed upon her by the political vacuum, sought to enable the selection of a new president. On January 9, 1994, at her direction, the National Assembly modified Article 85 of the Burundian Constitution, empowering itself to elect the next president of Burundi. Four days later the National Assembly elected Enteri Amira to become president in a vote, 78 to 1. Enteri Amira was scheduled to be inaugurated on January 22, but the parliamentary opposition, led by Uprana, 
filed a suit with the Constitutional Court to block the installment. They argued that Article 182 of the Constitution, which stipulated that the document could not be modified in times of national crisis, rendered the National Assembly's amending of Article 85 void. Frodeba parliamentarians argued that the change was necessary to fill the vacancy, since holding a national election to replace the former president would have been impossible. The Constitutional Court ruled in favor of the opposition in a decision split along ethnic lines. The Hutu justices subsequently resigned and on January 29 Kiniji's government issued a decree dismissing the Tutsi justices. This led to several days of violence in Bujumbura. With the assistance of United Nations Representative Amadou Old Abdullah, Kiniji brokered a compromise with the opposition, whereby Enteri Amira would be installed as president with a new Upperna prime minister, and the constitutional court would be reinstated. Enteri Amira was sworn in on February 5. Kiniji resigned as prime minister when he was inaugurated. On February 7 Enteri Amira appointed Anatole Konyankiko to replace her. Kiniji was the second woman to serve as president of an African country, after Carmen Pereira of Guinea-Bissau, who also held the office in an interim fashion. Opinions on her time in government were starkly divided. Many of her Tutsi contemporaries regarded her as vacuous and a negative influence on the country, with Panafrica denouncing her as Madame Fiasco. She retained a significant amount of respect among Frodeba members. Responding to criticism of her leadership, Mark Manary Kaiser wrote, what could she have done in the face of an unforeseen and unprecedented chaotic situation? Reflecting on her time in government in 1999, Kiniji said it made people realize that a woman can do even more than a man can do, with the soul of a mother and strong will, at the highest level of politics. Linking her to her contemporary in Rwanda, Agathya Wailing Iamana, political scientist Jane Jansen wrote that the two women owed their temporary rise to the top to an attempt to find an accommodation to the ethnic conflicts that plagued their respective countries. Upon leaving government, Kiniji assumed an executive position at the Banque Commerciale du Burundi. She then held several international positions, including jobs at the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, the United Nations Development Programme, representing it in Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, and Senegal, and the office of the UN Special Envoy for the Great Lakes region in Nairobi, where she served as a political advisor and program coordinator. She returned to Burundi in 2008 and became an independent economic consultant. In that capacity she advocated for the right of women to inherit land and property and for the use of democracy. In 2016 the Carter Center selected Kiniji to lead its International Election Observer Mission in Zambia for that year's general elections. Thank you for watching this video.